Hi, it's Pastor Keith. I want to thank you for joining me tonight as I want to talk to you about the topic of garments and wineskins. One of Jesus' most effective methods of teaching was using parables. Now, a parable is just an earthly story with a heavenly meaning, and throughout the Gospels, we read several parables. But I want to look at the first parable that's recorded in the Gospel of Mark. It's in Mark chapter 2. It starts in verse 21. And, and Jesus taught, No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. Otherwise, the new patch pulls away from the old cloth, and a worse tear is made. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, otherwise the wine will burst the skins, and the wine is lost as well as the skins. But new wine is for fresh wineskins. You know, that's an interesting parable, and we're going to break it down. But in Jesus' day, again, this is an earthly story. And so he's talking about the garments, and so this is something that people are very familiar with. And in Jesus' day, most of the garments were either made out of wool or linen or maybe a combination of both. And both these fabrics had a tendency to shrink over time. The more they were washed, they would get a little bit smaller and just shrink a little bit more every time. And so Jesus says, you know, if someone's had an old garment, it's been washed a lot, it has shrunk. You don't, something doesn't happen to it, you get a hole. You don't get a brand new piece of cloth and put over it that hasn't begun to shrink because if you do that, that new piece will shrink and it'll start tearing the old cloth that has already shrunk. And, and so that was just something logical that the people knew. Uh, he also talked about that you don't put new wine into old wineskins. The wineskins were made out of goat skin. And so when they put new wine, the, 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 the fermented wine would produce gas and it would cause the goat skin to expand. But once the goat skin expanded, it would usually reach a limit where it couldn't expand anymore and, and it wouldn't go back down. It would just stay at that size. So you didn't put new wine in it because you put new wine, the fermented wine would start expanding and with the goat skin had losing its elasticity, it couldn't, it couldn't expand anymore and so it would just burst. And so, again, this was just a common thing that, that people knew. But Jesus wasn't just trying to tell them and remind them you don't put a new cloth on old cloth or put new wine in, in old wine skin. He was teaching a, a, a heavenly truth. He was teaching a spiritual truth to Christians. And I think it's one that we need to be focusing on tonight. Because one thing he's telling us is, is that you cannot mix the old life you were living before you became a Christian with the new life that God wants you to be living now. In other words, there has to be a change in our life after we accept Jesus Christ, our Savior. He, he wants the world to see that we are different because now we are Christ followers. You know, Jesus was basically telling us that we need to have uh, out with the old and in with the new transformation in each of our lives. And, and so just as new cloth on old cloth is incompatible, just as new wine and an old wineskin is incompatible, our old actions, our old ways are incompatible with the new actions and our new ways that we should be demonstrating as followers of Jesus Christ. And so, you know, as, as the garment uh, illustration, we need to remember that as Christians, we just can't put a, a patch on our life and say we're Christians. We just can't make this announcement, oh, I've decided to follow Jesus, but not change the way we live. You know, one of my favorite other parables in, is in Luke chapter 15, where Jesus taught the uh, parable of the prodigal son. And we're told the prodigal son that he wanted to, his father to give him his inheritance. And then he went off to a foreign land. He spilt, spent off his money uh, on riotous living, on, on partying, on uh, harlots. And he ran out of money and he wound up having to work in the pig pen. And in Jewish culture, working around swine, around pig was, was an abomination. It was the worst thing a Jewish boy could do. And, and I love that parable because the boy came to his senses according to the scriptures, according to Jesus, and he went back to his father who represents our heavenly father. And just like our heavenly father, the father in the parable accepts him. He runs to him. He, he loves him. He's willing to bring him back into his house. But do you remember one of the commands he gave? Put a new garment on him. In other words, he didn't want the son who'd been the pig pen to be wearing the same garment into his house. He didn't want that garment that had the muck, the mire, and the manure, the pig pen all over it. He said, I want a clean, fresh garment. I don't want people to see any sign of where you used to be. 
And that's what God is looking for us as followers of Christ, that he wants us to put on a new garment. He wants us to put on a new lifestyle to show the world that Jesus Christ has changed our lives. Paul spoke about this in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, where he says, Anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. You know, tonight, I just want to take a few minutes and share a couple of the things that should be changed in our life as Christ followers. The first thing I want to focus on that as Christ followers, our actions should change. You know, when, when Jesus comes into our hearts, he comes in not for us to keep living the same way we used to live. He comes into our lives to make us a new person, a new person that acts differently, that, that talks differently. He wants us to be a person that when the world looks at us, they say, hey, something has changed in their lives. You know, that was the whole uh, crux of Jesus' parable. You don't take a new piece of cloth and put an old piece because that new piece is going to shrink and it's going to tear the old cloth. You don't take new wine that's going to produce gas into old wineskin because it's going to burst. In the same way, we can't combine our old lifestyle of the world with the new lifestyle that we're to be living in Jesus Christ. The the ways of the world and the ways of God don't mix. Because God wants your life to be a testimony. God wants your life to tell the world that Jesus Christ has changed me. I love what John said in 1 John chapter 3 verses 18 through 19. He says, Dear children, Let's not, let's not merely say that we love each other. Let's show the truth by our actions. Our actions will show that we belong to the truth. So we will be confident when we stand before God. I love what he says. Our actions will show we belong to the truth. Well, who's the truth? Well, Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is the truth. And John says it's our actions that tell us the world that we belong to the truth, that we belong to Jesus. I think we need to stop and ask ourselves many times, by looking at our actions, who does the world think we belong to? Do they think that we belong to the same world they belong to? Or can they look at us and tell a difference and say, they're a follower of Jesus Christ? So as as followers of Christ, our actions need to tell the world that we've changed, but also as, as Christ followers, We should have changed attitudes. You know, the attitude of the world is really that we make ourselves number one. We focus on ourselves. We choose to please ourselves before other people. But listen to what Paul wrote in Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 through 5. He tells us, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. Our attitude should be the same as Jesus Christ. There should be a change. Instead of focusing on ourselves all the time, we should be focusing more on others. You know, as Christians, we should be thinking differently. We should be thinking differently about people. We should be thinking differently about things, possessions, our motives, our actions. I like what Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 4 verses 21 through 24 where he says, since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. And the thoughts and attitudes that we're to have are the thoughts and attitudes of Christ. You know, in verse 22, he says, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life. That, that phrase, throw off, in the, the Greek actually referred to taking off a garment. Uh, if I had a coat on, it's like the, you've been working, the coat's dirty, and to the Greek word that translates throw off, I mean take it off and just get rid of it. Get it away from you. And this is what Paul says we should do with our old sinful nature and our former way of life. We should just get rid of it. He tells in verse 24, I'm sorry, 23, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. And the thoughts and attitudes we're to have are the thoughts and the attitudes of Christ. You see, to be a Christian means to be Christ-like. 
And if you're, by your actions and by your attitudes, if they are not the actions that have to do with Christ, you're not being a Christian. You know, the two things that characterized Jesus' ministry more than anything else was humility and sacrificial love or service and sacrifice. You know, I think one of Jesus' greatest acts of humility when he washed his disciples' feet in, in the culture that Jesus lived, the washing of feet, they, of course, they just wore sandals and they walked on dusty roads and so their feet would get dirty. And so when they entered someone's house, the, it was expected that someone would wash their feet, but it was always the lowest servant in the house because it was looked down upon as a very low job that no one wanted to do. But Jesus demonstrated humility by washing the feet of his very own disciples. It, it was a act, great act of a service. But then, of course, Jesus' greatest act of sacrifice is when he died on the cross for the sins of the world, to pay for my sins and to pay for your sins. And these are the type of things that we should be demonstrating in our life. This is the type of attitude that we should have, an attitude of, of serving others and an attitude of making a sacrifice for others of giving up our time, maybe giving up our resources for other people to show them the love of Jesus. You know, this is a parable we don't talk a whole lot about. But again, Jesus said, No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, otherwise the new patch pulls away from the old cloth, and a worse tear is made. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, otherwise the wine will burst the skins, and the wine is lost as well as the skins. But the new wine is for fresh wine skins. Our new life as Christians is for a new life for the world to see. So in other words, as believers, as Christians, as Christ followers, we're to no longer mix our old life with the new life. We're to show the world that we've been changed by Jesus Christ, by our actions and by our attitudes towards others. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your word. Most of all, we thank you for Jesus. God, help us to take this parable, uh, this uh, earthly story with a heavenly truth, apply it to our lives, that Father, that the way we live and the way we treat others will tell the world that we are followers of Jesus Christ. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me tonight. And just want to remind you one more time, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And whether it's here, whether it's there, or it's in there, I'll see you soon. God bless.